Boss Here we're at 70. Let's, let's rock and roll. We're at 70 now. It is 101 p.m. Eastern Time. It is. Thank you, Richard. You have a bit of a radio voice, by the way, sometimes. Mr. <laughs> I've, I've also been told I have a radio face. Uh, definitely a radio face, too. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome. It is Wednesday, March 24th, day 17,412 of the pandemic, I believe. It's like dog years, <laughs> as I've said before. I have no idea, no concept of time anymore. Welcome, everybody, to another Culture Club every other Wednesday conversation. My name is Michael Kerr coming to you from beautiful Canmore, Alberta in the inspiring, spectacular Canadian Rockies. And you're gonna hear from her in a few moments. We have a lovely and talented and brilliant and inspiring guest host with us today, Natasha Purnell. So please give a shout out to Natasha. And we've got the lovely and talented and brilliant Richard Haddon joining us. He is going to be the chat herder today. Well, I am the cat herder. So Richard will be monitoring the chat box for your questions, for your comments to Natasha for your ideas. Please, again, a reminder, make sure you send your messages to everybody, not just the panelists, so everybody can see your words of wisdom. We are sad that, once again, Sanjay and Jeff, Sanjay Nath and Jeff Tobe, our regulars, are missing, apparently. I don't know, Richard, where are they? They're, they're, they're like at Disney World or something? I, don't know I what think they're they've doing. gone off together somewhere. I don't know, since they yeah. live in two different countries, and that's probably not possible, but yeah. Clearly something that uh, was you know, the, the, the truth is, we're all, we're all actually working, and it's just that, Michael, you and I have managed to make sure that our work does not happen every other Wednesday. But <laughs> Jeff was talking to a client, and they said, when are you free? And he said, oh, let's see pretty much every other wednesday oh no wait but it was too late <laughs> he, he had to like, do it yeah, on the I've alternative heard, i've right. heard that guy likes to color outside the lines right so <laughs> it does, yeah. like him. Kind of does. <laughs> that that is true so natasha i'm going to turn it over to you and natasha and i we we met virtually right at the start of the pandemic, really. So we're sort of we're we're pandemic pals in some ways. That's that's when we met. Yeah, like we a, are. We are pandemic buddies for sure. Yeah, a, about a year ago. So, Natasha, uh, let's just start off. I'd I'd love to hear just a, a bit of an introduction from you. You are a chief culture officer. So. Tell us about that role, how you got into it, what all is involved in that role, how it's maybe evolved over the course of the pandemic. Yeah. And I know we've talked to several people, even on every other Wednesdays here, who have talked about how a culture, cult, your job is a dream job for them. They, they love the idea of that. So, so tell us all about yourself, Natasha. All right. and your role. Fantastic. Okay, well, that, that's lots to get started with. Uh, now, so we, we did have one question, Natasha, that you can perhaps answer from the very beginning, and that is, is it Natasha or Natasha? Natasha. Great. Okay. Thank you, Natasha. You're welcome. Uh, so, hi. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm really honored and grateful to be here today. Very excited to have this chat. I uh, have been watching since uh, your conception of the Every Other Wednesday, so I feel pretty blessed to be able to be here as a guest today. Uh, so yes, I am Chief Culture Officer at Park Insurance in beautiful Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada, and I have been with Park for a little shy of two years now. Uh, it's a long story sort of how I, I got this role, but I'll try and keep it short. I was working at another insurance brokerage as an office and sales manager, and we had had a change in leadership and the culture had gone from really positive and exciting uh, and uplifting to uh, the complete polar opposite. So uh, almost sort of like Mike, what you explain your sort of your Dilbert work environment, right? Uh, soul so I, sucking, soul, soul sucking. sucking. It, was, yeah. it, turned, it turned into be soul sucking and it was disappointing. So uh, I knew I didn't wanna be there anymore, wanted to make a change. Uh, being a licensed insurance broker, we have a internal job board for uh, in the insurance industry. And so I posted my resume on there and uh, 
within two hours of me posting it on there, our personalized manager, Sean Walker, reached out to me. Uh, and I've been acquaintances and friends with him since high school. And we've known each other in and out of business over years and years and years. And he calls me and says, oh my God, you're looking for work. And I said, yes. And he says, well, what are you, what are you looking for? I said, well, I'm a broker, but I, I don't really want a broker. I want to be in management. I want a family oriented operation. I love that feel. I love a small business where I can make changes, coaches, mentor, lead, uh, sort of, he, you know, he knew me from when I owned my own uh, quick service restaurant many years ago. So he knew sort of my management leadership style. I said, why would he have for me? And he goes, nothing, but you absolutely have to talk to our vice president of operations, Chelsea Fitzpatrick. You two would get along so well. Uh, so long story short, uh, he connected Chelsea and I, uh, who's still currently our vice president of oper operations, and she's the third Fitzpatrick to uh, run our brokerage. And uh, we just, we hit it off. We had a phone conversation, and then we had a meeting in person for an interview. And essentially, we created my role in the job interview. She had started a culture evolution a couple years prior to, uh, and that started with doing employment engagement surveys and uh, really working on building the culture. As her role as vice president of operations grew and those demands became more, she knew she needed help on the leadership team. And she didn't really know that she was looking for me until we met in that interview. And we just started talking about what I was really great at and what I was passionate about and what I loved and our morals and our values just seemed to align. Uh, you know, she explained where the company had come from and where she wanted it to go. And we just, that's basically essentially how we created my role. Uh, and then we weren't, we weren't sold on a title. So we, we signed, you know, the deal and said that I would start. We tossed around a few title options, one of them being chief culture officer. And so in the two weeks when I was leaving my old uh, position and, and moving over to park, I started trying out different titles with everyone. And when I started, she said, so what title did you land on? I said, it has to be chief culture officer because, you know, I was doing a lot of networking at the time, being obviously pre pandemic. And every time I said to someone that my title would be chief culture officer, they went, ooh, that's interesting. What's that? And so I said, that's the one we have to have because it opens a lot of conversations. So I was, I was so just going to ask you if that if that got a lot of queries, like, uh, what is that? What's your what's your real job? Yeah, <laughs> what's your real job? What do you do? <laughs> so is that like HR? <laughs> yeah, it's hard. And I mean, yeah, absolutely, it has some HR elements of it, but I definitely don't uh, identify. Uh, as, a, as an HR manager. So yeah, so that, that's my role as, as chief culture officer. And uh, we do, you know, the, you asked about, you know, where, where it started and where it's come from. So, you know, as chief culture officer, I'm tasked with ensuring that all of the decisions we make within the operations of the company, every decision we make, conversation, changes that they all align with our values, which is fit, um, with a pH. So passion, happiness, innovation, and teamwork. So just four short ones, but really concise and to the point. And we do those through several different initiatives. We have a health and wellness program where we really embody life work balance. So not work life balance, but life work balance. So all of our employees only work 37 and a half hours a week. We give three weeks vacation right from the get go, two personal care days, 75 sick hours. And um, we offer 20 minutes a day for a wellness break. That can be, we really encourage people to get up out of their desk and go for a 20 minute walk, but it could be meditation. It could be retail therapy that day, if that's your jam, if that's what you're feeling, right? Sort of thing. Uh, someone's asking fit, what is the T? T is for teamwork. Uh, so that's, so we have the health and wellness program. As I mentioned, the employment engagement surveys, that's something that we do on a quarterly basis. We are currently yield a 92% satisfaction rate with our employees. Uh, so that's something that we're quite proud of. When we started our cultural evolution many, many years ago, I believe we were in the, the late 60s, which was even then still high because I think you guys even know statistically, it's about 30, 33% is what commonly is the satisfaction rate. Yeah. Uh, so that asks our, our employees about 30 questions about their happiness and engagement on uh, work. And then we make changes based on their answers. 
Uh, we, we do. You actually use the information and put then uh, make actionable items from what you want. Absolutely, learn. absolutely. And because we do it quarterly, right? It's always, we're always running with ideas, right? And sometimes it can be really small little fixes like, hey, Natasha, this pen sucks. <laughs> It's blue ink and we want black ink, right? But sometimes it's bigger issues that we have been able to solve that have really made a difference in our environment and make it a really great place to work, right? And that's, that's part of it is that our staff know that we're constantly trying to evolve and make it a better place to work, right? Uh, you know, some things, even how we distributed our workload, right? We used to do it based on an alpha split and we learned from our uh, engagement surveys that while that worked for us for many years, it then stopped working and we needed to reevaluate it and create a new program. And obviously that took more than a quarter to do, but you can see then from, we, and we chart all of the data and all, so we can see, you know, every single quarter moving forward, right? The engagement continuing to increasing because even though our staff know it's a pain point, they, they can see that we, we heard them and that we're making actions to move forward with it. Very cool. Yeah, you and you and, Rich and Richard hit on an important point. You have to actually listen and implement the suggestions you get Absolutely. in your engagement surveys, right? Yeah. 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 So, and we do uh, we do quarterly professional development days. One of which Mike has done for us, which was putting humor to work. Uh, but we've done click customer training, time management, uh, financial health check. We've had some fun ones like heart math and nutritionist. Uh, we recently just did an anti-racism uh, workshop and lots of insurance industry related ones. And we do quarterly health and fun challenges. So we do uh, a challenge every single quarter that revolves around something healthy, but it gets everyone up and out of their desk and gets everyone to sort of connect and gets that blood flowing. So we've done a plank challenge where we started at 10 seconds and we met at 11 o'clock. We literally just got down on the ground and we planked and we increased every week. Until by 11 10 and 10 seconds, right? Yeah. Until 11 o'clock and 10 seconds. And then it was over. <laughs> <laughs> the first time. Yeah, and we got we you know we got to uh, we got to a point where we were doing uh, two minutes of planking, right? And that was just something so great. We've done squat challenges, sit up challenges, push up challenges, uh, lots of lots of really fun stuff that we're doing at, at Park Insurance. Okay. Well, let, let me ask you this, uh, Natasha, because you would be in the best position to know. We've talked a lot, obviously, on every other Wednesday about the definition of culture. And we've got a lot of input on the definition of culture. I want to hear your definition of culture, organizational culture, and, and what, how would you describe an inspiring culture? Absolutely. Okay. So my definition of culture is, I see it as a family. So, uh, you know, a company that encourages their, their employees to behave like a family. And if you look at it, you, it actually does operate quite similarly to a family unit. You have people that are, you know, working together on their individual goals, but they're also working together as a common goal, right? They have fun together, they work together, they play together, but they're all in different, you know, parts of their life, right? So, you know, lots of empowerment, lots of encouragement, uh, you know, lots of support. Uh, and, and that's just, you know, to me, culture, a really positive culture is one that sort of embodies that, that family unit, right? You know, it, and it stems down from leadership too, right? You know, leading by example. And that's a lot like a family unit, right? You know, the parents are, you know, sort of set the tone for, you know, how the family is going to operate, right? And that's the same with leaders. Uh, as for an inspiring, uh, inspiring culture, uh, I, I'll say I have, two, I have two things, right? One, one is a quote that guides me, uh, you know, in almost everything I do in my life. Uh, and that's a quote by Maya Angelou, and that they won't remember what you said, and they won't remember what you did, but they'll remember how you made them feel. Uh, and so I go in with intentions every single day with my employees about how can I make my employees happier? How can I make it a great place to work? How does this all make them feel, right? So, uh, and, then, and then lastly, it's just, you know, a, another guiding principle that I go by is, is that people who feel appreciated will always do more than what's expected of them. Mm -hmm. cool. so, so a few people in the chat box 
Natasha, had the same thought that I that flashed across my mind. And I know some of my clients have talked about this in terms of terminology too. When you bring up the aspect of creating a family-like environment, some people, I would be one of those, who had a little bit of a dysfunctional family. When I <laughs> thinks, no, I don't want it to be like my family at all. <laughs> so, so how do you how do you respond to those people who might actually have an adverse reaction to the term family? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, absolutely, and that could be a trigger for some people for sure. Um, I think you know the ideal family, right? Obviously, that's what we're speaking about. You know how I would like to see it, but you know what? Sometimes it can be dysfunctional too, right? I mean, everyone knows it, right? I mean, we're not walking around putting rose-colored glasses on here, right? I mean, even we have a great, great working environment, uh, but sometimes it can be a, dis a bit dysfunctional, like a family, right? I mean, things happen, life happens, a pandemic happens, right? Sort of things, so. Um, I, yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, a matter of how you roll with the punches. Yeah. So uh, another question that, that I know some people might be interested in, and in fact, I've, se I've seen a few comments in the chat box that, oh my God, this sounds like a dream job that you have. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for people? And, and we've actually talked to some people in our consulting calls who have said, you know, I think my dream job is to be some sort of culture champion in my organization. What advice do you have for those people to make, help make that happen or move towards that? What special skills yeah. do you think people need to work on if they want to move towards a job like that? Right. I mean, I certainly fell into this role based on my previous work experience uh, and, and being in the right place at the right time, but obviously being, you know, really passionate about workplace cultures and wanting to be in an organization that was as progressive as park insurance is and really values that and is an employee centric employee centric uh, company i would say that you know because a lot of my role does revolve around hr management and some of those tasks and functions such as recruiting talent retention onboarding that some hard skills in terms of hr would probably be really beneficial I think uh, organizational behavior classes would also be beneficial. I'm a forever student, constantly learning. I think it's really important. You know, I, I've taken a lot of classes at UBC Sauter School of Business on, on leadership and mindful leadership, you know, leadership facilitation. Uh, for the soft skills, I would say if you want to be in this uh, type of field, you need to genuinely and passionately care about your people on a professional and personal level. If you buy into them, they will buy into you. That's where the ownership starts to take place, right? So I would say that. I would also say that um, if you're looking to get into this and you don't really know where to start, uh, like how they say it takes a village to raise a child, it also takes a village to raise a culture. Uh, I'm not recreating the wheel in a lot of this stuff. I get a lot of my information from webinars, uh, culture gurus such as you and Richard and, and Jeff and Sanjay. Uh, I follow you know, Jen Lim from Delivering Happiness online. Uh, which is an amazing uh, book. Zappos is a great culture story if anyone's yeah. ever interested in, in reading that, right? Uh, and connect with other professionals. I mean, COVID has obviously put a kink in networking, but you can do a lot of online networking. Uh, connect with me online on LinkedIn. I have uh, all the time in the world to talk to people about, about culture, right? And, and how they can progress their career. Thank so, you, Natasha. Just one, one just follow-up clarification. Yes. You get most, though, of your inspiration from Richard and I, right? Not so much Sunday yes. and Jeff. Sunday and Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, mean, I, I thought so. I just wanted to be clear. Yeah. Now, now speaking <laughs> speaking of skill development, we, we, we are going to give away some door prizes throughout this. We, for, we forgot to do that. So Ooh, before we, we get to your burning question, Richard, we're going to give away because finally it is released officially to the wilds now, the Jerk Free Workplace. It's available on Amazon, Kobo, Kindle, from us, bulk discounts. If you want signed copies, you can get in touch with me. But we're going to give away some ebook versions of the Jerk Free Workplace starting right now. And by the way, lovely somebody question. thinks that they're getting a door. Somebody thinks the prize is a door. It's not a door. It's better than a door. Better than Look, a door who was kind enough to give a testimonial that made it onto the front cover. 
the one and only Natasha Purnell herself on the front cover. I so got my perfect cover. to have you here, Natasha. Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen. We are going to the Wheel of Names. Always so exciting. And let's give away our first prize right now. Drum roll, everybody, please. And the winner is... Now, what I forgot to mention, Bobby Bates, are you here present? We Can you check the chat box, Richard, to see if yeah, Bobby... Uh, Bobby, if you're there, would you please uh, say hello? If you're not, we're going to go to someone else because you must be present to win. Yes, I, I forgot to mention you. that important detail. We're giving it away. We're rewarding people who are here today live on the call. Okay, no, no Bobby Bates. Bates. Okay. No Bobby? No Bobby. Here we go again. Hopefully this, hopefully this won't feed up the, eat up the rest of our time. Right. Catherine Potvin. Catherine Potvin, are you there? Catherine. Catherine Potvin. Going once, going twice. Going, going twice. All right, let's try it a third time. Third time's the charm. Here we go. Galbraith, Galbraith. Odette. Oh, Odette, Odette, are you there? Galbraith. Odette Galbraith, are you there? Woo! I think, wait, wait. Third time's a charm, maybe? <laughs> I, thought I, saw I believe the saying is the fourth yes, time. Yes, I see it. She's here. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Odette's there. All right, Odette, you're, you're the winner. <laughs> Hooray! Congratulations. I will make sure you get an ebook version. Richard, over to you. Yeah. Well, you know, I was thinking, Natasha, in assigning a specific role like this, which is so innovative and so kind of cutting edge and really distinguishes your organization from somebody. But I wonder if there's a danger in it that employees or management will maybe see this is just Natasha's job. You know, you're just solely responsible for everything and anything to do with culture and that they might kind of offload that to you and say, oh, well, it's not, um, not anybody else's role. And I bet you have a different view than that, but I wonder what you can tell us about that. Yeah, 100% different view from it. I mean, uh, I'm not culture. Uh, all 40 people that work for Park Insurance, they're the culture. I just am lucky enough to get to serve them and help them facilitate building on such an amazing culture uh, and, you know, doing the, the back end work behind it. Um, I, I don't want to be identified as culture. I, I think it's really important that the leadership team has buy-in and that they know, again, what I'm speaking about, you know, they need to lead by example and that they're really embodying the culture, living through to the values and that the staff are seeing that. I mean, I was really lucky and blessed when I started that we had already been on a cultural evolution for a couple of years. And so the team, this, you know, the leadership team and the staff were already quite familiar with it. And so when I started, it wasn't uh, something that was totally out, out of left field. But with that being said, I had to build a lot of trust with our current staff and our leadership team that was there, that it wasn't just someone walking in and saying, hey, I'm, you know, the culture queen, and this is what we're going to do now, right? I had to build trust with them. Some of our staff have worked for part insurance for over 30 years so that you know it's not uncommon for 30 years 25 years 18 years 15 years 10 years and so I had to build trust with them that I would you know and connect with them and build rapport with them in order to be able to you know start facilitating and making changes um, and having their trust and, and ownership in that I would also uh, say how do you involve others in in doing the work that you do uh, how do you how do you partner with others in the organization so that it moves your mission forward? Absolutely. I would say two things. One is, is that I make sure that when we're hiring, we're always hiring for fit. And so that's a huge thing. I, I can teach you. Yeah, I can, yeah we, right. It, I mean, we can teach you all the hard skills I have about how to be an insurance brokerage, but I can't teach you how to show up to work happy and engaged and motivated and want to be on a team and look for solutions and be a problem solver, uh, engage with your coworkers, things of that nature. So I would say that's huge. And I ask a lot of great questions in the interview process that funnel out the people that wouldn't be a great fit, right? I, I ask people on a scale of one to 10, how weird are you? And uh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have how is it only go up to ten because Michael would not be would not qualify. I know you'd be like 12. 10, yeah, like a twelve. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. 
I'm thinking how cool would it be to be to go into this interview and say, and now we want to introduce you to our chief culture officer, Natasha Purnell. And they're saying, oh, how cool is this? There's like chief yeah. culture officer in this company. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I do the traditional stuffy questions and then I literally verbalize in the meeting, you know, that's enough of the, the stuffy questions. Let's have some fun. Right. So if you could be any animal, which one would you be and why? And they're just like blown away, right? That they're in an interview and being asked, you know, how weird they are. And if they were an animal, which one would they be and why? Or if they were given a thousand dollars to plan a company event, what would it be and why, right? So as all that's an intended cows, shameless plug, right? I, I would be a cow. I would be a cow. I yeah. would just be a cow. That's an easy question. I, I, I love that. I love that. Clark Insurance Company has been known to ask the question, during a job interview, this would be right up your alley, Natasha. So a penguin walks into the interview room right now and the penguin's <laughs> wearing a sombrero. Why is the penguin here and what does he say? Oh my God, I love that. I am so adding that in, that's fantastic. You, you've got it. just taking notes here, yeah. I'm taking notes. So we're I all taking notes that. from each other. It's just so exciting, so exciting. <laughs> so Natasha, obviously the world has changed about a year ago. Everything's moved online virtually, but I know you have just rocked it at Park Insurance, connecting people, maintaining social stuff in your company. Tell us what you've been doing, what you've been up to. Share some of your great ideas for how you, you've been communicating, reaching out, connecting in the virtual world. Absolutely. We've done, and like I said to you guys pre-thing, I, you know, I had to write a list of, of, of all the all the stuff we've done over the past year because I, I wanted to make sure I didn't forget any of the great stuff. And it was actually uh, really awesome to sort of go back to it and sort of reminisce on some of the really fun activities that we've done over the past year. And we've always done fun activities. Fun activities. Do we want to do one more door prize, one more fun activity door prize? before Natasha gives us this, because I've seen some of this list and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. And let, let's, see if you can, let's see if you can, can, can hit it the first time this time, Michael. Ooh, Lynette, Lynette Hawkins. Hawkins. Lynette, are you there? If so, are you in raise the house? Your, or say hello to the chat. Lynette Hawkins, going, going once, once, going twice. Going. All right, we're gonna try again. There we go. Drum roll, please. And we are to Eleanor Ellie or Ellie Eleanor. 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 Eleanor, are you there? Eleanor. Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> okay. It took us four times before. I bet we'll get it this time. Third time's the charm. Joan. Joan. Joan Neiman. Joan, are you there? Going once. Okay, fourth one more time. Fourth time. Neelam Sandhu, are you there? Okay, looks like maybe they don't know how to to see the chat when the wheel is up. Okay, I don't know. Well, what we'll do, we'll check the, uh, we will check the, Isaac. who was that? All right, Isaac Claussen. Now, Isaac is often on our call, uh, but what we'll do is we'll, oh, oh Eleanor's here. Oh. Eleanor's here. Oh, Eleanor, awesome. Uh, all right, Eleanor, anyone else who's here? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, great, we'll get great. It to you. All right, awesome. Okay, we wanna hear these, these great ideas okay. from Natasha. So Natasha. Back to Natasha. Take it away. Take it away. All right. Uh, well, so right within the first week of us being working from home, I we were all just craving that connection. It was something that we'd always had, uh, you know, with lots of staff appreciation events and team building events and just you being in person together. And so I created happy hour. And so for the first few weeks, we honestly just got online and had drinks at the end of Friday. It was, you know, we had it every Friday at 430. And we just have some drinks online and chat and get caught up. And we had so much fun with it that it evolved into we'd spend about half an hour you know, catching up, having some conversation connecting, and then we turned it into playing games. And we've done trivia, we did uh, bingo, we've done categories, we've done a scavenger hunt, we've done Pictionary, two truths and a lie. Uh, and even recently, just a couple of weeks ago to commemorate to one year of being in uh, the in lockdown happy hours, we did a, a, a paint and sip night. So that uh, 
that picture there in, my, in the back, that cherry blossom tree, we did online together. So we all just got together online and, uh, and drank some wine and, and, and painted a cherry blossom tree. It was really awesome. So very cool. Uh, yeah, so that's a weekly event that we've been doing. We have also put in place lunch roulette. And that was something where you everyone would just put their name in the hat on a weekly basis. And I would do a random draw and I would pair two people up. So I would pair Richard and Michael up together for that week. And then they would uh, converse and set a time and they would have lunch together via Zoom or Telus Business Connection, which is what we use and just be able to connect. And that was really awesome with, you know, we have three different locations. So you, even, you know, pre-pandemic, it's nice because it creates that, you know, cross department, cross location uh, connection and, and bonding. We've uh, celebrated lots of national days, which Michael is always uh, uh, so kind to send out in, uh, in his e weekly emails and, and post online on LinkedIn. So we've done uh, national wear your pajamas to work day. And obviously we were all working from home <laughs> and wearing, most likely wearing our pajamas anyways. But again, it was just something, right? So we all got you know dressed up in our pajamas. We took pictures and then we made a collage. We circled it around it everyone via email and we got to vote on who had the best set of pajamas obviously they had to you know be pg-13 pajamas no no playboy bunnies or anything here and uh and then whoever won got a little prize right sort of thing you know either a, a, a little gift card or, or a gift basket uh we did a cinco de mayo night so that was on may 5th and we all just got together at night with our families and our bubbles and we drank uh you know, cervezas and and, uh, and ate some tacos and had a really good time. We did our annual summer party. So we do two annual uh, staff appreciation events. And I think a lot of companies have decided to just either postpone them or to not do them because it's difficult to do them online. Me planning two of them will be the first to say that they are incredibly challenging to plan and execute online, but I think our staff is so, so worth it. And so uh, our summer party, we did a 1920s themed murder mystery party. And so everyone got a party pack delivered to their door the day before that had some wine in it, a whodunit magnifying glass, uh, some 1920s uh, themed like fedora or the, you know, the lady's headband with the feather on it. And we all got online and we had, uh, we all ordered skip the dishes and had drinks and dinner. And then we had a company come in and do a a full facilitated murder mystery party for us and we had a prize for whoever had the most uh great 1920s themed right dress up and I mean some of our staff just they're they're so competitive uh one which is fantastic uh and then we had one lady who did her whole um corner of her room in, in a speakeasy sort of thing so her and her husband did a whole speakeasy in their in their house so she, she won uh, we, we, we pivoted our onboarding to be virtually, you know, so obviously we used to hire someone, they'd come in, you'd walk them around the whole entire office, introduce them to everyone, take them for lunch, not doing that anymore since we're all working from home. How crazy is it? I mean, to interview and start somewhere and you're working from home, you haven't even ever gone into the office and, and met any of the people in person. Uh, so we've pivoted all those to be online and what a great experience that has been because we invite all the team to come on. We go around in a, you know, sort of circle, introduce yourself, how long you've been in park insurance, what you've done, and then an icebreaker question, right? And so those can be anything between from, you know, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Or uh, if you were on a stranded island for the rest of your life and only had one meal that you could eat, what would it be, right? And those are even just fun for our team members that have worked together for years to get to know all these interesting little things about each other, right? Again, just strengthening those connections, strengthening those bonds. Um, water cooler meetings, we did a pumpkin carving contest at Halloween. That was tons of fun, so again, you know, on your own time, at night, within your own bubble, carve a pumpkin, bonus points for if it was COVID related sort of thing. 
take a picture, send it to me, right, sort of thing. Uh, and then again, made a collage, circulated it, got to vote on it, right? Just, you know, all these little fun things, right, that are keeping us connected and they're giving people something to do so they're, if they're not bored at home. We did a uh, national, celebrated National Cake Day and we did cakes and cocktails. Uh, so we had a chef come online and teach us how to make a homemade brownie cake and a hot buttered rum. And we got to enjoy in that. That was lots of fun. Uh, sorry, if, that, if you can hear that, I have a, a dump truck in my alley right now. <laughs> Natasha, I was just thinking, listening to this, I am sure there are people in the chat box who wanna know if you have um, job applications available. <laughs> This is, as they say, this is live television and this is exactly what happens with Zoom. You know, someone has a, has a great question I wanna just throw in here and then ask you to continue with your list. But it says, you know, it sounds like your leadership team is really behind all of this, especially when it comes to budget. Any suggestions on how to get your leadership team on board for things like this? A hundred percent, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's really great if you are interested in any of this to start to be a culture ambassador within your own um, organization. And so I would say that I would encourage you to start looking at some stats and data to give to your leadership team to show them. And I mean, Michael and Richard can help you with this and point you in the right direction. There's a ton of information out there to show you that the correlation between happy customers equals happy clients, right? And that your revenue production, performance, retention, all of these amazing things start to increase as your employee happiness and engagement increases as well. And so if you can show them that, and I mean, so much of this stuff costed you know, nothing, almost nothing, right? Sort of thing like National Pajama Day, that doesn't cost anything to do that. I mean, maybe a $50 gift card or something like that, or even just the fact that people want to get together and have a lot of fun. Lots of people, my staff, a lot of them are just so competitive that they just like winning, right? Sort of thing, they don't, need the, they don't actually need the, the prize. They just like to have the uh, the bragging rights of it, right? So I would say just- that I heard you say that sounded to be like there was any real budget involved was, you know, the, the party where you sent things to their home and things like that. So yeah, every now and then you're going to do something where you're going to make a financial investment. But as you say, a lot of it is simply things that you can do that you just are being creative with. Yeah, absolutely. Happy hours are entirely free. And some of this stuff, the paint and sip night, those were something that, that we, our staff bought their own supplies, right? I, I, was the one that had the platform. We did found a video online, a YouTube where it was following along to do the painting, right? And so I just facilitated it. That, you know, that doesn't cost anything, right? And I, again, I'm not recreating the wheel. Go online and Google it. There's a ton of ideas of things that you can do to connect virtually that cost nothing or very minimum and reach out to your leadership team and see if they're interested. Absolutely. Do some of our events cost money? For sure. Our last one, which is our annual winter party, that's our largest uh, event that we have every single year. And we have a, a decent budget for it. Absolutely. But that's because our staff- you would, have had that, uh, you would have had that event anyway, even if it hadn't been for Absolutely. And we just pivoted it to be virtual. So we took all of our staff in February to Mexico for the night. So we went on a winter fiesta. So we thought since it's been a year since anyone's traveled, we would take them to Mexico. So everyone came to the Park Insurance uh, Mexico Resort. The day before they got a party pack delivered to them again that had tequila, triple sec, uh, park insurance branded sunglasses, a sombrero, uh, little mini margarita shaped shot glasses. It had produce in it uh, that they would need to make uh, some appetizers and it just had a ton of fun stuff in it. And then on the day of, we all signed online, we had a DJ. We had a virtual photo booth where everyone could go and do a little keepsake photo of themselves that said Park Insurance Winter Fiesta at the bottom. It superimposed your background to look like you were on the beach in Mexico. Uh, and then we had a contest for whoever had the best, you know, welcome to Mexico postcard. Uh, we had lots of dancing. And then we had a mixologist come online and teach us how to make margaritas. And then we had chefs come online and teach us how to make ceviche and guacamole and pico de gallo and all of those uh all of that stuff was in that party pack that we delivered to the staff so they didn't have to go out and, and get any anything really 
Uh, what else did we do? Yeah, so and then we had just tons of fun in and out of the virtual uh, photo booth. We had prizes from some of our great partners and vendors. So we played some games. We had a boomerang salsa dancing contest at the end. Uh, our DJ played a name that say, uh, song game. It was it was just a ton of fun. We were online for you know four or five hours, and then we had wow. the introduction of our Wow Awards. And so that was a new award that we had created this year. Uh, last year we did an innovation award at our annual winter party. This year, so what we do actually is. Uh, we send out monthly communication to our staff called Keeping You in the Loop, which is a bulletin based on our leadership meetings, of just you know, really short and sweet to the point about what they need to know. So they're never blindsided. They always know what's coming down the pipeline in terms of changes within our organization. And we always attach a wow card to it. And a wow card you can fill out for any employees, any of your colleagues who have wowed you, right? If they've demonstrated any of our fit values, passion, happiness, innovation, teamwork, or if they went above and beyond for anything and then they submit them to us and we post them all online and it's a fantastic peer-to-peer -peer recognition program that we have and uh unbeknownst to them i took the top three people who had the most wow cards submitted and created a wow award for them so they got a, a medal that said park insurance wow award and they got a gift certificate for it and that was just something a little extra that we added to the winter fiesta so it was a great time we had a i've, I've outdone myself now now I, i'm terrified about what i'm going to have to find for the summer party <laughs> if anyone has any ideas let me know <laughs> you create those expectations you know, you know, Natasha. Natasha. now you have to live up to it right such, and a, high it, bar, yeah. such a high bar and and i think people are are blown away by all the ideas and the energy really? in your company and that you're bringing to the job it is so cool and is it not fair to say now we do have to wrap up we're coming up to the 45 minute mark mm -hmm. here but is it not fair to say that be going virtual has actually opened up some creative options that weren't even maybe there before right uh, yeah a hundred percent absolutely yeah. yeah very cool uh let's give away one more door prize before we sign up yeah do that very quickly, here we go. Drum roll, everybody. We're going to the wheel of names, which, by the way, you can use in your virtual meetings. You can put in topics in the wheel to talk about different topics randomly. You can use it in all sorts of different ways. Kaylee. Kelly Arrow. Kaylee Arrow. Uh, are yeah, you here, Kaylee? Hit, hit your, real quickly, hit your chat, your chat bubble if you're there. If not, we're going to move on. We're moving on. Okay. And... Ashley, Ashley Herrera, are you there, Ashley? Ashley Herrera, yes, 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 okay, yes. Ashley's there, great. And even better that Ashley was there on only the second try. Well, <laughs> listen, <laughs> Natasha, this has been an epic episode of Every Other Wednesday. We so appreciate all the great things that you talked about. One thing that I really, you know, that I was so impressed with, not only all of the social and all the fun and creative things that you're doing, but you, as you, when you talked about that you get this newsletter and it's about all the changes coming in your organization, that shows that you have a really full and extensive understanding of culture. That's not just about the celebration, it is that, but it's all about understanding the history and the tradition and what are the values in the company. So. Mike and I cannot thank you enough. And I know Jeff and Sanjay would, if they were here, uh, they would be thanking you so much. I'm sure that people will want to connect with you on LinkedIn. And we so appreciate your being uh, here with us today. We, uh, in two weeks, we will be back. And that is on what, April the 7th? Is that April the 7th? Is that the date? Yes, April the 7th. <laughs> Yeah, April the 7th. And our topic on that time will be culture trends, the future of culture. And I have to say that I think having a designated chief culture officer might just be one of those trends that organizations are going to be looking at in the future. So thank you to everyone. We broke 100 this time. We had about 103 people with us at one time. And a lot of that is thanks to Natasha. Michael, what do you have to say as we close out? Well, I too just want to extend my incredible thanks for Natasha for joining us this week. You are a role model for so many people. Your energy, your enthusiasm for your people, for your company, in your role as a culture champion is contagious. So thank you for sharing your expertise so generously with everybody. Thank you everybody for joining us on this every other Wednesday. And Natasha, I'll leave the last word to you. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I uh, It was a pleasure being here. This was tons of fun and the 45 minutes went by so fast. I had a great time talking with you guys. Please, you two can, and, and Jeff and Sanjay continue doing what you're doing. I think uh, you guys are doing really great work and I find a lot of inspiration and motivation and energy from uh, you guys. So thank you for that. Uh, to everyone who signed in, I, I even saw some of my employees uh, and our staff were here today, and I know some of my friends and my family are here supporting. So thank you, everyone. And to everyone who had some any other additional comments or questions, like I said, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, my favorite topic to talk about is culture, and I got lots of, lots of time to talk to people about culture. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again. We'll thank see you, you every other Wednesday. Wednesday. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye, all.